Hi, welcome back for a Brutus Monroe gel press collaboration. As you can see, these are the cards that I will finish up creating. Today we're going to talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly of using a gel press. I want to walk you through some of my successes, some of my failures, just be real with you about how to learn to love your gel press. I was generously gifted by Gel Press the Faith Impressions set. So there are four shapes on the bottom. And then to the left and the right, I also have some more solid and a shaped plate. They're a little bit longer, a little bit narrower. narrower. They are perfect for Bible journaling. So if you work in a Bible journal and you love to create artwork, this is the package for you. I created my beautiful cards using the plate on the right right side. I also received the Impressibles from Jen Stark. This is called Repeat Circles. I believe it's 8x8. Eight eight. I did not use this today, but I promise you that I will come back with this. I did simply want to use Brutus Monroe products. I chose to use Velveteen Glazes as well as Chroma Mist. I'm also going to bring in some Distress Ink. I've used Distress Ink with my gel press before, but I've never used the Chroma Mist or the Velveteen Glaze, so I thought this was an option opportunity for me to kind of get acquainted with those products on this plate. There are three different shapes in this package as well. This was another generous package that Gel Press sent as well as these combs. Now these combs can add texture to your whatever you put on your Gel Press. They are four-sided so each side of both of those are going to create different textures and then of course we need a brayer so I'm going to remove my paper. I'm going to talk a little bit about how to use a brayer on a gel press or anything else. You do not want to roll your brayer. You want to kind of roll and lift as you can see by the motion that I'm presenting to you. There was the back and forth rolling. You do not want to do that because you're not going to be able to fill up your roller. Here are the velveteen and the chroma glazes. I thought, because I've seen this before, I thought that I would try to use the manila folders for my projects today. I have a ton of these, and so I thought I would use this on the surface. My first thought was to lay down some of that velveteen glaze with my brayer. Over to the right, I do have a little container of water so that I can dip my brayer in there, and as you saw, I did wipe it down using just a paper towel. The first color that I laid down was banana and then the second one is called beautiful blush. I'm going to add a little bit more to this. So the velveteen glaze when it does dry it does have kind of like a plastic or a resist feel to it. So you're going to see that it is going to cause a little bit of a challenge when I start working with my chroma mists. And the reason that I mention that is not because you can't use velveteen glazes because obviously I am going to do that. Here I'm adding grape jam, but I wanted to let, I'm, I just wanted to share with you that you just need to try out different products, try them out in different ways to see what's actually going to work and what's not going to work. I'm going to show you that these were not a waste of my time because I'm actually going to take one of my ugliest pieces and I'm going to show you how I created something really beautiful with it. So here was my first attempt. I did cut down those file folders and I'm just splicing splattering on some chroma mist in lilac and cobalt blue. I splattered it on there and I just lifted it off. Now the cobalt blue really uh, overtook the lilac so I'm going to add some more lilac and then I'm going to press it down over more to the left and the right hand sides because it just was overpowering that color and I really wanted to have those splatters on there. So when you're playing with a gel press you do want to do a lot of layering. Today I am going to try stencils, chroma mist. Here's where I sprayed a little bit of that spray over the stencil and I thought that I would try to lift up the impression 
and it did not work. So that was one of the things that I learned is that when I was spraying through the chroma mist, when I was spraying the chroma mist through my stencil, that it wasn't giving me the impression. In fact, I got big, giant blobs of leaf green onto this panel. But I'm not stopping here because with a gel press, you do like to layer. I didn't use any stamping as I mentioned, so I'm gonna move on to the banana. I'm gonna lay that color down and I thought maybe I could just lay the chroma mist down or I could lay the velveteen glaze down, put my stencil on top and add a second color. <sighs> What I didn't think about was how much color, how much busyness I already had down. So when I try to get this impression over the top, because I used lighter colors, it is not going to show up. So that was a lesson that I learned. That doesn't mean that I'm gonna set this aside and say I'm not gonna use my gel press anymore. No, it means that I'm gonna work through this and I'm gonna see what is going to layer up and what is not going to work. So now I have an impression right there. I'm going to take that piece and lay it over the top. And of course, I didn't get any of that impression. It sits on top and it really just gets lost in the background. So I decided to brayer some of the sprays on. Again, cobalt blue and lilac and I'm just adding different colors in different places. I'm gonna lay my stencil on top of that, and then I'm going to add another piece of paper that I had brayered onto. And again, I'm not getting the impression that I'm looking for, so it was still just a little bit too light. I'm gonna try a third time. This time I'm going to use Distress Ink. I'm using Shaded Lilac, I believe, and aged mahogany. I'm going to use my brayer. Now I've done this before and it's worked beautifully, but I think that it's just resisting on the velveteen glaze. That's my that was that was my impression is that if maybe if I didn't lay down that paper. Now that one came up nicely. You can see the impression. You can also see that the velveteen glaze is much lighter in the background. So the busier your background the um, with the velveteen glaze, the less you're really going to see what you're trying to layer up with stencils and with ink. That was a lesson that I learned. You can see that I can see it maybe a little bit, but not very much. On to the left hand side, when I am using my brayer, I am just rolling that, blayer, that brayer onto the back side of some of these panels. And I also use white or plain panels so that I can add on top of those as well. So here I'm trying the combs and I'm going through the ink and I'm still not giving up on using a busy pattern. I'm relentless, I tell you, and I can't see it. All right, but I could see that one because it was much lighter and because the aged mahogany was much darker. So I thought I'd bring in picked raspberry, which is more of an intense color, and I couldn't see it. So now we're on to the little cloud. I thought that I would try stamping with this with the velveteen glaze. I did happen to have some other colors on that brayer. I didn't wash it off. I laid down that quilted lace stencil. I'm going to lay this on top and I can't really see it. So I'm going to take what's left on my stencil and I'm going to add it to the manila. Now I think I prefer white paper. I don't think, I've seen some beautiful tags and people use, just, you know, create some beautiful things with the Manila folders. I think that you need to use much bolder colors than what I'm using to work with those Manila tags. So here I'm coming back in. You see I have a white piece of accent opaque paper over to the right, and I'm coming back in with the beautiful blush chroma glaze. And I'm going to try something a little bit different. And these are the ones that actually uh, were the ones that I loved the most and I used to create my cards with. So I'm adding the glistening snow to the left side. And finally, I'm going to add the grape jam to the right. 
I am going, I've cut down my panels. You can see that they're just a little bit wider than the width of this gel plate. And I'm going to use my brayer and I'm just going to go up and down. I'm not trying to mix the colors. I want more of a striped look. I'm going to use the clean piece of paper over to the left side to clean off my brayer. Again, I do have water over to the right. I'm going to lay that quilted stencil over the top of this plain white piece of over the top of the gel plate and add my plain white piece of paper and look at that beautiful impression. So it's not a really busy background and the impression is beautiful. I'm going to use what's left on the stencil over to the left hand side is where I brayered off what was left on my brayer and I added the what was on my stencil and you can see that I'm getting beautiful impressions. I have nice texture with that. Finally, I have an image on my belt, my gel press and I'm going to take another strip of white paper, nothing else on it, and I'm going to run it over the top of that and I get another beautiful impression. So I'm coming back relentless I tell you and I have two different colors I have um, maybe pink flamingo and tumbled glass I thought I would try to get that impression of the cloud over top I did get it but I really didn't love it so I set that aside here are a couple of the images that or the prints that I was able to get. So those are the ones. There's that bold, ugly one. And I am not going to throw that away. I'm going to show you how I was able to work through that piece and get a very lovely piece to use on a card later on. So I am going to add this Christmas tree. I did spritz a little bit of water on that to dilute some of the green. And look at how pretty. Look at that. I can now use that image on a card. That paper is not wasted. Do not throw those prints away. Here's a look at some other prints. These, this one was basically just using the velveteen glaze and the brayer over top. This one, I sprayed some of the chroma mist through the stencil, and I also used the heart gel plate to get a little bit of texture. And then again, these are some of the impressions that I'm going to use. And I love that pretty color combination. I love the texture. I love that I got three different panels and I took little effort. So the lesson in this video is not to give up, to not throw these pieces away because you could use them to cut out sentiments. There's lots of ways that you can use these prints. Here's a look at the four cards I created. This is a three by six mini slim line. That's using what was left after layering the stencil on top of the gel plate. Here is the impression that I got over the top after putting the stencil down. So I laid the stencil down over the velveteen glaze and that was the impression. And then these are the brayered off pieces. I created two four and a quarter by five and a half inch cards and this one I popped up using some foam tape and the second one I inlaid. So don't be discouraged by your gel plate. I hope that you will pull it out and try playing with it. I'm going to show you one final look at my card. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you Gel Press for your generosity and I promise I'll be back with another Gel Press video very soon. Have a great day.